Hey guys, I'm Izzy and I have Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome and my kneecaps are very loose because of it and I actually recently went to a surgeon who thinks that I do need knee surgery. I wanted to talk about what causes constant dislocations and subluxations as well as patellar tracking issues. Patellar tracking issues are kind of what's happening with my knee. It's when I walk or um, bend my knees, the kneecaps move in and out of place left and right, mainly actually outwards. So for my left knee, that would be towards the left, as opposed to just a little bit up and down and like that's that, that would be normal, but mine completely moves in and out and that's not good. When I sit down and I go to straighten my leg, normally when someone straightens their leg like this, their kneecap stays in the same position, but mine stays normal and then it goes all the way over to the side and clicks out. It's like even if I try to hold it in place, it can't. So that is called J tracking, which means that my kneecap, instead of kind of staying in the same place or just moving up and down a little bit when I straighten it like that, it actually goes up and moves over like a J. So I think that in from my understanding, the main reasons that it happens for me specifically are that First of all, I have a shallow groove where my patella sits. Second of all, my T-band is really tight. Third, my exterior quad muscle is so much stronger than the interior one, and it's constantly pulling my kneecap out of place every single time my quads are activated. And fourth, I have Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, which causes everything to be a lot looser in my body. So my medial patellofemoral ligament is more likely to be stretched and it's not as strong to hold the patella in place. So those are the four main reasons that I believe I have these issues and they're also very common issues. Maybe the first three are more common. The last one is a rare genetic disorder, so I'm not going to say it's very common. But um, so let's discuss. So what do I mean by a shallow groove? In the past, I've had x-rays and MRIs and they've shown that my groove where my patella sits is actually too shallow. So instead of there being a groove in the patella here, it's kind of like a flatter groove in, patella, in the patella on top of it. So the groove doesn't really hold it in place. It's kind of more just sitting on top of something that's like not as um, like holding in place. Now I wanna talk about treatment options for a shallow groove. I know that that's something that you're born with, so I don't know how much can be done about it, but I know that there is a surgical option to kind of shave down that groove and make it a little bit deeper so that your kneecap has more of a place to sit. I like how I have EDS, so I do it like this, but I should have been doing it like this. Um, yeah. Another thing is a lot of people with patellar tracking issues have a really tight IT band. So basically your IT band is this muscle that runs all the way from here to here. And you know, you can honestly kind of see mine. It's like a line that goes like this. Mine's really tight and a lot of people's are pretty tight too. And so if that's really tight, it connects right here to your patella and it could actually pull your patella out of place. So I think that that's also another factor into why my kneecap is so like constantly coming in and out of place. It's really tight, the IT band, and it's pulling it out of place. Possible treatments for the IT band include rolling out your IT band. I think that it's mildly controversial. Some people believe that it really helps and other people think it helps a little bit and some people are like, that's not gonna do anything for your IT band. For me, I've personally found a lot of benefit from rolling my IT bands. Okay. Ah. Uh. <laughs> this is not going well. Be in the middle of it. There we go. Uh. This really hurts. It hurts so good. <laughs> okay, you should probably do it for like 30 seconds, but I really don't want to right now. I'm rolling my calf because my calf is really tight. See what's weird about ADS is like my calf is so tight. But my ankles are so hypermobile. Like, you know, like that's like really far down. Another thing would be therapeutic ultrasound. So they can use ultrasound to basically heat up the AT band and roll something over it. So the heat kind of bypasses your skin somehow and goes straight into the muscle, if I'm understanding this correctly. And so it ends up kind of heating up the AT band and it might make it a little bit um, softer and less hard. Let's talk about the quad muscles. So in your legs, these are your quad muscles. This part of my quad muscle is really strong. You can see it's like kind of goes out like that. Some people have that. 
Now what's happening is this is pulling my kneecap out because it's so strong every single time I activate it, this is being activated as opposed to this and this. This is the interior part of the quad. Now this also gets activated, just not nearly as much as this one does. Now something I'm trying to work on in physical therapy is being able to activate both of them at the same time and also kind of have them work in unison to just pull my kneecap up and like the normal amount and prevent it from going out. For that issue, there's a lot of different treatments that you can do. So I know that physical therapy can be really helpful for that because you can strengthen that interior quad muscle. That's something that I've been working on for quite some time. Another thing you can do is use an e-stim machine. So I wanted to show you this, which is my electric stimulation e-stim. So it's actually broken. Well, it's not broken. It's out of batteries right now. So it's not like this is exactly the best time to show you, but I'm just going to show you how I do it. So, oh, stay. So basically that these are electrodes. I have two. I place one along here on the inside like that. And I take another one. And I place it like this. You want them to be at least an inch apart because if they're too close, I think they can kind of shock you and that's probably not gonna feel too good. Now you connect the wires, you turn it on, and what it does is every 30 seconds, it does a 10 second um, kind of like bzz, buzz kind of thingy with bobber and it makes your interior quad muscle, at least mine, um, contract and what ends up happening is my kneecap ends up pulling inward a little bit to its actual neutral position that it never really is in because it's usually always a little bit too much to the left. And um, when, once I got uh, better with this and I started using it more frequently, I was able to actually do things while it was stimulating for those 10 seconds, such as walk a few stairs. And that way I was teaching my body to use the interior quad muscle and the exterior, why did I hit myself, and the exterior quad muscle together in unison. And it's actually pretty effective, but sadly it wasn't enough to cure me. Now about Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. So it's kind of complicated because first of all, everything just has more of an ability to pop out due to Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome because everything is so loose. So I'm going to get an MRI today um, and basically the surgeon thinks that I tore my medial patellofemoral ligament which is on the inside of your knee right here and it's supposed to hold your patella in place and prevent it from moving outwards. A dislocation would be where the patella completely leaves the joint and it can go back on its own or it needs to be pushed in or it needs to be surgically put back in place. I've dislocated this knee before. And then a subluxation is where it only partially leaves the joint. It doesn't go out as much. It tends to be less severe. Now, there are some risk factors with subluxing and dislocating your knee. Now, other than the fact that it just hurts, it can do things like pull ligaments. So it could pull that medial patellofemoral ligament and even tear it because the kneecap is normally held in place by that. And if your kneecap is forced out or it comes out, that ligament will be stretched and might tear or just remain stretched. Sometimes it could heal itself, but if it's a continuous thing and it keeps dislocating or subluxing, it likely is completely torn or just stays stretched. So that's what we think is going on with me. So after I get my MRI, um, after a few days, I should get a call from the doctor and he'll let me know if my ligament is actually torn or stretched, which is pretty sure that at least stretched. And, um, to confirm again that I'm a candidate for surgery and if he really thinks that it's necessary. Something else that I want to show you, I have to take off my knee brace, is that he thinks that this bone that's right here is out of place a little bit. So this happens to some people with a bunch of different dislocations, is you have a bone that goes along here and it should be right here in the middle of your kneecap. Like you see how this is like the middle of my leg but instead it ends right there. It's too far this way, which can happen a lot with a lot of dislocations and subluxations. So um, he, his idea is to also surgically fix that somehow and kind of realign it. And that can also, I think, be beneficial to um, preventing your kneecap from dislocating a lot. So I just recently got a really good knee brace from my knee surgeon. Let me show it to you. Okay, so I like this knee brace a lot because what it has is it has this hard piece that can hold your patella in place. That's really important if you have really bad tracking. 
So what I do is I just put this right over my kneecap with this piece on the left of it. Take this, wrap it around. And take these and pull it over. And that way my kneecap is a lot of support holding it in place this way. So if it tries to go out that way, I have this thing right here stopping it. So that's a good option too. One important thing about the surgery for me though is that it will help prevent osteoarthritis because what tends to happen with people with EDS is they're more prone to getting arthritis because especially in your knee, for example, everything's moving back and forth. It might be grinding down the cartilage. Hopefully the MRI will show if it's actually damaged at all, the cartilage. I really hope it's okay. Um, but that's something that scares me a lot. And once you kind of have arthritis, that's kind of a hard thing to fix, you know? At least it is in today. Today it's hard to fix. So uh, maybe in the future, but I don't know. So by getting this surgery, it might decrease your chances of getting arthritis because if it is successful, the kneecap will stop moving over and it won't be grinding down the cartilage as much. So that would be awesome. Anyway, I really hope that you like this video. I wanted to give something pretty informative because I know that this is a common issue in both the EDS community and the non-EDS community. Um, both my mom and my sister both have patellar tracking issues, not nearly as bad as I do, and I think that physical therapy has really been a help for them. It just has not helped as much for me as I would like for it to, and all my physical therapists have suggested surgery for me, or at least seeing a surgeon. So yeah, thank you so much for watching this. Please subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. I tend to do a lot of EDS videos as well as just kind of like um, comorbidity videos of EDS that might help a lot of different people. So thanks so much. Bye.